Yesterday, we had two uh, marriages, uh, weddings in our church. We had one at 11.30 and we had another one at 4 o'clock. So that one at 4 o'clock was uh, not a member of our church, but it was from our United Methodist uh, church, from a different church uh, that pastor's daughter had married. And also we had another church member that married outside um, at a different place. So we had three weddings. You know, this scripture tells us about a wedding um about a wedding where Jesus and his family was invited to. And in this wedding, in this um, big ceremony event, the wine ran out. You know, you would expect maybe in this wedding either more than, um, you know, people that were invited showed up. So whether the wine ran out because of that or they just didn't have, they just didn't prepare enough of the wine from the beginning. We don't know the exact reason why the wine ran out. But the fact of the truth was that the wine went out, ran out. And at this time, this kind of wedding, you know, for a wine to run out, you know, this is such a big deal. This is a problem that could potentially cause a problem for this not only this marriage but for this whole family this is the situation that we're looking at in the scripture and this wedding is where jesus was um, invited so the same thing you know whether we know christ and we're living each day you know we may be facing difficulties and um, situations where struggles come even when we know christ when even when we live with christ and then we fear oftentimes about and worry how we're going to resolve this problem. But Maria in the scripture, Mary, Mary uh, Jesus' mother, she knew the problem. She heard about the problem and then she inquired to Jesus, you know, about this problem, telling him that the, the, the wine has run out in this wedding. And when, he, when Mary inquired Jesus, Jesus came and helped out. Jesus performed his first miracle and, and resolved this issue. So I want to ask yourself, as we face this 2019, the new year, we're going to be, even when we're walking with Christ, even we're going to face struggles and difficulties and problems. But when we do, because you're walking with Christ, when we leave it up to God, when we lay it down before Jesus, He will come and help you and resolve those situations. He will not only resolve those problems, He will actually turn that struggle as an opportunity to perform God's miracle and to show you God's blessing upon your life. So, again, God tells us, you know, whenever we face struggles and problems, let us not be fearful, but lay it down before the Lord, to trust the Lord, and do not be fearing. So, so through this miracle where Jesus turned water into wine, you know, what God is telling us through this uh, miracle is basically Jesus telling us, trust in Him always. Just trust Him with all of the difficulties or any problems you have. Lay it down before Him. Do you believe that? You know, and out of the 5,000 people when the, he was, Jesus was preaching, you know, they were lacking food. They didn't have anything to eat. So they were worried. They were fearing. The disciples were fearing what we're, how we're going to feed these people. But then there was a little boy who had five loaves of bread and two fishes. And Jesus took that bread and fish and prayed before the Lord, blessed it, and were able to feed the 5,000 and even had 12 baskets left over. Like this, you know, if you lay down all your problems and fears before the Lord, God will take care of you. You know, there was a um, Lazarus who was sick and eventually died. And the f and, but um, Jesus arrived a few days after Jesus said La Lazarus had died. But the sister, Martha, you know, brought this problem before Jesus trusted him and laid down before him and Jesus was able to raise him from dead you know when you it, it may no matter how difficult how big this problem is you know no matter how impossible this thing is in our humanly nature to think when you lay it down before Jesus Jesus will take care of it you know when the Egyptians were coming out when Moses took the the Israelites coming out of the Egypt they were faced with uh, the Red Sea in front of them. They didn't know what to do. They were about to die with all the Egyptian army coming to kill them. You know, did Moses um, 
did Moses raise up the staff to, to pray to him to split the sea apart? No, that's not the prayer that Moses did. What Moses did was bring that problem before the Lord and lift it up to him and said, Lord, this is before you. Please take care of this. And that's when Jesus and that's when God took care of that problem and split the Red Sea so that they can walk through that path and be delivered. So it is just trusting the Lord and living up all the problem. Another example, Jericho uh, the the wall of Jericho, such a mighty big w uh, wall that was not um, physically able to be defeated by Israelite's army because they were so small, weak, and less in numbers. But when Jesus, when God told them to you know circle around the wall, singing with trumpet and noise and and singing, that's when G when and and when they trusted the Lord and followed that command and be obedient to that. You know God broke those walls apart. You know another example, Elijah, when um, when the other um, the king was um, you know they're ba basically betting to each other, your God and my God with a Baal, um, whose whose God will listen to their offering and actually burn up the fire uh, in their offering. And Elijah, you know, not only did he not only trust God but trusted the Lord fully. You know, even poured water on that uh, on that sacrifice. And, and then prayed and God you know brought fire from heaven and burnt that offering when you trust the Lord fully without any doubt when you trust that's when God will work in your life when you are bringing the problem it's not just bringing it and, and, and having doubts but it is truly trusting him with everything and when you trust him when you trust the Lord God will bless you God will show amazing things that our human nature cannot understand. So in another word, the trusting in the Lord means praying for praying to God. That's the other word for trusting in Him. When you trust God, you pray with pray with expectation and hope that God will answer your prayer. But that is a difficult thing. You know why? You know how I know that that's a difficult thing? Because we have a lot of our prayer uh, meeting times and yet not a lot of you guys, uh, not all of you guys show up. So that's how I know how prayer life is such a difficult thing. You know, you guys know that you're supposed to pray, but you guys just can't. It's hard to really carry that out in our life. When you say, when you trusted the Lord, when you trust the Lord, it means coming out to the prayer and giving and praying to Him, meeting Him one to one, having that relationship with Him, and confessing all your weakness, failure. When you confess those things, that's when God is moved, and that's when God performs His work upon your life. So again, we know in our head we need to pray, but it's such a difficult thing to carry it out with our life. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know, as you face this new year, 2019, you will face difficulties, you will face tests. But when you face those things, it is through the prayer that you God will work with you. God will work, uh, show His miracles in your life. You know, to do this alone, to pray to Him, God alone, it's difficult. That's why we need to be trained. That's why we need to make it a routine thing to come out to morning prayer meetings and our Friday prayer meetings so that it becomes a part of our life and to be trained as we gather together with two and three before God's name. That's when God will work with you. Of course, it's important to be able to pray on your own, but you know you need to be able to be trained to be able to do that by coming to the church, by coming to the morning prayer meetings, and by coming to our Friday prayer time and I, I hope and pray that you will become a prayer warrior and again I cannot emphasize how important it is for you to come out to the morning prayer meetings if you cannot come every day please at least come on Saturday if you cannot make it to every Saturday at least come on the first Saturday every month that's our, our whole family prayer meeting that we made into this uh, for this year so please if whether you're fearing whether you're difficulty whether you're having um, you know if you're having excuses of these situations those are the times you need to trust the lord and come you know you may have a lot of the uh the you know, excuses you know because of your child because of you know your work because of this and that and this we can come up with ex 
thousands of excuses but at least please take a t make this a priority to try to come at least that first saturday each month as it's going to be a whole um, church morning prayer meeting time you know i want you to know we never know when we're going to die you know sometimes unfortunate things happen we die sooner than we expect but when that does what's important is to be saved and to continue to train your children about the importance of prayer you know it's not like oh i'll train my children when they're growing up no it starts now you need to train your children to be able to pray what are you trying to train them what is the important thing in their life are you trying to teach them to be a good you know person quote unquote you're trying to teach them to be a smart person so that you can become you know some famous person to be able to rule the life and have a good life and blah 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 you know what's the most important thing it's not being rich it's not the quote-unquote the worldly success but it is to train them to trust the Lord and to train them to have a prayer life to bring them with you to the Saturday uh, prayer meeting that's such an important thing that that's the most important thing you can teach your children that you can train them so, you know to train them to fast once in a while and to pray and that's what I pray that our church will be together that we will work all the generation together as one to do this prayer meeting and that's when I trust that that's when God will do perform his miracles so another thing when this situation uh, we're going back to the scripture when we heard about this um, you know the wine has run out Mary um, was interested in that problem and wanted to help that problem you know in our church you know whenever there is a lot of problems or some something happen you know there's two type of people in the church there's one type of person who when we hear about a problem they don't care this is like oh it doesn't affect my life it doesn't matter and then there's the other per type of people in the church when there's a problem they become silent and they come humbly before the Lord and they pray they pray for the church they pray about the problem so there is those two type of problem so when Mary heard about this problem in this wedding she didn't judge that um, wedding uh, host saying oh what is this you have done you, you didn't prepare enough she didn't bring that a problem she silently prayed and brought up that problem before Jesus she trusted the Lord she trusted Jesus to do the per to do to resolve this problem so she had that hope and she you know the fact that she lived with Jesus for the past 30 years and had that relationship with Jesus for the past 30 years she knew that Jesus would be able to solve this problem and she came up to Jesus and brought up that problem and asked him to help so how do you think so how did G how did Mary know that Jesus would be able to resolve this problem I already kind of spoke to you I already kind of mentioned it but how did Mary know that Jesus was able to perform this miracle before you know so the scripture says when Mary came and asked Jesus you know resolve this problem basically Jesus told Mary you know this is my time has not come yet you know why would you ask me this but when Jesus responded this way to Mary Mary still said she still said to the servants uh, go and do just as what Jesus tells you to do so how did Mary know that Jesus was going to perform the miracle that's the question I'm asking you the reason why is because Mary had relationship with Jesus Mary raised lived with Jesus for the past 30 years you know they lived in the same household they communicated well and they kept that relationship because Mary had that relationship with Jesus she knew that Jesus would be performing this miracle so I ask you are you do you have relationship with God you know you may be asking God for all these things praying about this and that but if you don't have relationship with God God will not answer you
you know, when I was younger, I would go to movie with um, my son. You know, when I go to movie, I would look at the movie and sort of analyze the, how they, um, you know, sort of put the movie film together. And I analyze it and, and you know, by dwell going into having an interest and dwelling into that what well, I was able to understand better and become a person that is more ready to sort of be a public speaker type of thing not that I'm saying I'm a good public speaker but I'm saying is the interest that I had the relationship and the delving into that I, I got into now I was be more I was able to be more prepared and be able to uh, do better with the things so that's the same thing we if we want to pray and if we want him to answer us we need to dwell into getting in relationship with god and how do we have relationship with god it's through the scripture through the word through reading the scripture daily and making that into our life as we reflect on the word and and to um uh, reflect on it and to use it in our life and practice it that's when god's uh, God, that's when you will have relationship with God and God will continue to speak to you through the Holy Spirit and that you will be with Him and that you'll be able to um, you know, pray to Him and God will answer your prayers. And that's the important thing in order for you to have a relationship with God. And how do you have relationships with God? Like I said, you need to dwell into the Scripture. You need to be coming to the prayer meetings. So I looked at the list for this um, to, for this year, who, how many, um, you know, the list of the people that read the scripture. You know, there's a lot, some of you guys who read the scripture three times this year. But I want to challenge you with this. How can you live your life without reading the scripture? If, you know, I'm, I know this is pretty harsh, but I want you to think about it sincerely. If you are not reading the scripture, and you're living your life that means it may mean that you're not having a relationship with God how can you have relationship with God if you're not communicating with them if you're not dwelling into God's Word it's a serious thing So the word reflecting means you listen and you uh, speak it out with voice and you think it. So listen, the fact that our, our church is growing, of course, is because the Holy Spirit is working in our life. But also the other aspect that's really important is that we, our older generation and our next generation, our children's generation, that they need to have relationship with God and to continue to work for the church and work for gospel so to be able to continue to grow as a church. But how can we grow to continue to grow as a church if we are not engaging in God's word and if we're not praying? So uh, the important thing that I want you to remember is as you raise your children, as you're teaching them, you know, yes, it's important to study hard and get A's, but what's more important is to read the scripture and then go to study. That's the priority. So let's look at the Psalm 119. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. This is Psalm 119 verse 97. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. In the verse 99 to 100, I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. So what you need to do as a parent, you need to teach your children to trust in the scripture and read the scripture. And that we will become, we will have that true relationship with God. And that's what we need to be teaching our children. More important than getting the good grades in the world.
you know, you don't go to a, somebody stranger and say, hey, lend me some money. When you don't have relationship with God, you can't request that and, and, and expect to get something, right? Same thing, if you're requesting God to help you, you cannot ask God to help you with something when you don't have relationship with Him. And again, the way to have relationship with Him is dwelling into the Word and praying. And that's what Mary did. Mary had a relationship with Jesus when she requested Jesus to help to, uh, about the situation, about the problem that they had in this wedding. You know, when you, um, I think he's giving an example about um, somebody who's working in a, like a federal or some kind of a counterfeit, counterfeit, um, you know, working place. And in order for you to be trained to be able to tell which one, which money is counterfeit and which is real, they train you day and night, day and night, how to count the, you know, the good money and the bad money and continue to train you and continue to train you until you become an expert and you can even you know touch something and, and know that this is my, right away a fake counterfeit kind of a thing. So same thing, in order for to know what's the truth and is false, in order for us to know what is the truth and know that this is Jesus' is calling, that Jesus is, is the response or the answer that God has given you, in order for you to know that that's truly from God or not, is to um, be trained over and over uh, by reading the scripture every day, by praying to God every day. When you truly have that relationship with God, then you will know, be able to tell what is the true response from God. So the psalm again says, you know, those who go in uh, and silently and have pre have relationship with God, that's the one uh, you'll be able to live the life that God has given you and to be able to glorify Him. You know, but one thing during my ministry, you know, so many things I see is that our you know our brothers and sister how come we don't engage in scripture how come we don't engage in the prayer life how come we're not coming before the lord to to confess and and give all our problem the reason that i realized during my ministry is because we don't know who god is truly we don't truly know who God is. And that's why we don't have a true relationship with God. That's why we don't bring all our problems before the Lord. That's why we don't we try to resolve the problem by our own power. I'm sorry to confess this, but a lot of us are not happy to get to know God more and more. We are more indulged in the pleasures that the world give we're more um, enthusiastic about the, the, the achieving the things of this world rather than the achieving the gospel and the blessing that God has in store for us. The first and most important priority that we need to have is before we achieve anything in this world, having that true, honest relationship with God. That's the most important thing we need to have and pray for. And when that's the most important prayer, that's when God will truly take control and perform the miracles and and resolve your problems you know some somebody said um, to a pastor if you're gonna become a good pastor you need to in one hand bring a hold on to Bible and the other hand hold on to the newspaper But, yes, it's important that you may be reading the scripture and you have the, the newspaper to read and to get the worldly sort of knowledge and all of that. But if you come here on Friday to pray, then it is a time of prayer. 
It is not for you to come here to prayer meeting and start reading this, the, the newspaper. That's not what you're here for, right? You're here to meet God. You're here to confess to God all the problems you have. You're here to pray, not to sit down here on Friday to read the script, the, the newspaper, or even if it's a Christian newspaper that's sitting out in the front lobby. Right? If you went to White House to be able to meet President, let's just say, let's pretend, would you be reading your Korean newspaper instead of um, you know, meeting the President if you came here to meet the President? No, right? So same thing with the priority. You have to have the priority set. Hosea 6 verse 3 says, Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. And surely as the sun rises, He will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that waters the earth. So the rain that's written here is like life, right? In the desert, when you don't have water, you're dead. There is no life. But the fact that that rain in the desert is like raining that life upon us. So that's what having relationship with God is, right? In this life that is dead, when we don't have it, when we have that relationship with God, it is like knowing that rain that pours out upon that desert. So again, another thing we can learn about Jesus through the scripture the first and foremost is that acknowledging God's power, knowing God's power. That's the thing that the scripture is teaching us today. Acknowledge God's power. That's almighty. God's word is all powerful. And when you are obedient to that word, that's when miracles will happen that's when water will turn into wine god raised dead uh you know lazarus from the dead god um chased out the devil that's living in a woman's life god split the, the red sea apart that is the miracle that god performs when you that is the power that god can do trust in him trust in the lord our hope does not live rely on our own ability our own knowledge our own um, power but our hope resides in god's power knowing god that he is almighty he is the one who sent his own his own son to die on the cross for my sin to save me to save me from the sin a life of a sinner that's the god that's the loving god that um who will perform that powerful miracle trust in him who is all powerful that's the first uh, first thing that this scripture teaches us about jesus the second thing that uh, teaches us through the scripture is to acknowledge god's love for us acknowledge god's love for us so when mary asked jesus you know please take care of this situation Jesus replied to Mary saying, it, My time has not come yet. Why would you ask me this? And yet Mary knew and Mary went to the servants and said, Do as Jesus tells you to do. So it's kind of interesting. And the other, you know, the other, another other example in the scripture is, you know, Jacob and the angel, God, you know were wrestling and actually Jacob won that battle against the angel is it because angel was actually weaker or, or God no God purposely lost for Jacob he purposely did that for his work in the future you know it is God's um, purpose in life to do things that are sort of unthinkable and that's because God loves us so much. Because God first and foremost loved us and had mercy for us. That's why He does things the way that He does. That's why He's so patient despite how many times we fail and despite how many times we betray God because of His true love for us. He is Almighty. He can do anything. But yet He still is, is patient and He still, um, you know, allow things to happen because He loves us so much. 
And that's why you need to trust Him so much. You know, the other day I was praying. And I prayed to the Lord and I said, you know, you know, of course, a lot, um, you know, I pray to the Lord in his ministry and I said, your, if it's your people, um, help me to accept, you know, whatever type of people that they are. Um, I trust you, Lord. So when I prayed that, you know, God sent all these people to this church, you know, good people to quote unquote bad people, frustrating people, problematic people, you know, but I said to the Lord, I prayed to him, you know, despite whatever people I said, I trust you, Lord. And when I prayed that, you know, so many problematic, quote unquote, problematic people have come to our church. You know, if I were to talk to you about all of these individuals and I could list, I could write a book about that. You know, even amongst us in our church right now, there's one of you, some of you guys who may be dead people. But you know what? I'm not criticizing. What I'm trying to do is to bring them before the Lord and trusting God's love. Because God's love is there's nobody that God cannot forgive, that there's nobody that God cannot change, that there's nobody that God, nobody, nothing that God cannot do. So if, whether you have those problems, those difficulties, whatever problem, problematic people in your life, it's not to reject them, but embrace them and pray for them. That's what we need to do because of God's love for us. God loved us when we were sinners. When we know God, when we truly know God, we can bring any problem before the Lord. You know, some people, you know, say I look scary. Uh, some children may see me for the first time and because I'm a big guy, you know, I mean, scary looking. So maybe they 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 fear me first at first but when they really get to know me you know the children loves me they come into my room you know just randomly barge in and then start digging through my stuff and have chips in my room and they'll take me you know because they know about me that i like chips i like candies so they know that i possess those things in my office because they get to know me they are able to have that uh, come in and find those things so same thing when we know christ when we are knowledgeable about christ through this reading the scripture that's when we will know and trust the lord more and more and more you could come before the lord with your, all your problems so as you engage in the word as you pray as you have that relationship with god so why do you fear why do you worry when god who's almighty who loves you you know why do you fear you fear because you don't have that true relationship with God. So God tells us in Isaiah 41 verse 10, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The God who is the creator of this world, who knows all things, who is almighty. He is for us. He wants to bless us. He wants to help us. But you need to trust him. You need to bring it, the problem before him for, a, for him to be able to pr solve the problems for you. It's because we don't fully trust the Lord and we don't bring the problem before the Lord. That's why he doesn't answer our prayers or answer the things that we need to resolve. Because we're holding on to the problem and trying to resolve those things by my own will and my own power. And not trusting in the Lord or bringing that problem before the Lord. The Lord tells us in the scripture of Psalm that He will bring us to the green pasture. He will bring us, He will use His rod and your staff to deliver us and to fill our, our, our glass. and our. That's the God who loves us, who leads us, who brings us to the to the green pastures, even in the darkness or um, even in the difficult situation. And that's the God who says He will bring us and lead us. When you, when He tells us that, how come you're not trusting Him fully?
You know, the scripture says, God even knows how many hairs you have. It's, it's the all-knowing God, all-powerful God. Do you believe that? The God who is almighty, who is all-knowing, who is who loves us, why would you fear? Why are you afraid? Why do you have problems that you're trying to resolve on your own? Don't worry about what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink, what you're going to do tomorrow. God provides for you. He will give you all the things that you need. That's what God, the scripture tells us. Luke chapter 12, 28. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will He clothe you? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after such things, and your Father knows what you need them. Amen. That's Luke chapter 12, verse 30. You know, when we don't bring all our problems before the Lord, when we don't pray in the name of Jesus, it's because we don't know God. We don't know the almighty and loving God that He is. That's because that's the reason why we're not able to bring the problem before Him. But know that God loves you. God wants to help you. God wants to give you the blessing. God wants to help us. That's why God sent Jesus Christ, His only Son, begotten Son, to die on the cross for our sin, to deliver us. And God tells us to lay all our problems and burdens before Him. Lay it all down before Him. Trust the Lord fully without any doubt. When we trust Him, when we fully believe Him, that's when God will resolve your problems and show His miracles. But, tr but the word trusting God, like I said, is having relationship with God is praying and delving into God's Word. And the next step to that is being obedient to His Word, right? So being obedient, that's the next step. That's the important thing. You know, when Jesus told the, the servants, go pour that jar with water, you know, if those servants didn't listen and wasn't obedient to God's uh, Jesus' word, that water would have never turned into wine. When they tr uh, when they followed and obedient to Jesus' word and pulled the the water in the jar, that's when the miracles happened. When they became obedient, right? So that's the same thing. When you read the scripture, when you pray to God, when you have relationship with God, after that, you need to be obedient to God's calling. You know, sometimes, you know, there are people who are sick, uh, who complain about problem here and there, you know, and, you know, you self-diagnose problem and you're like, you think you have this and you have that. You know, when you go to doctor, trust what doctor tells you. Don't say what you think is the problem, right? Because you're trusting your, your, your problem with that doctor. You go to that doctor because you trust him, that you trust that that person will resolve the problem or diagnose you. It's the same thing. If you bring the problem before the Lord, don't doubt. Trust him. Trust him. And when God tells you to do something, then be obedient. When Jesus tells you to fill the jar with water, don't, don't doubt, but do it. When you do it, when you're obedient, that's when Jesus' miracle happened. Now the scripture tells us, many of us say, Lord, Lord, yet you don't do the things that Jesus tells you. If you trust the Lord, and bring the problem before the Lord, then you have to listen to God's word. You have to read the scripture to tell you what to do. And when the God tells you what to do, you trust it and you be obedient to it. Not just call out, Lord, Lord, and that's it. It doesn't end there. You have to call out and you have to be obedient when God tells you to do something. Or be obedient when God tells you not to do something. You know, um, uh, Vucicic, who is a disabled um, guy who, who was born without arms and legs, you know, he said one thing. He said the biggest disability in life is 
the fear you have in your heart. It's not the physical debility, but it's the fear that you have in our heart. That's the biggest disability. When you have fear, you need to trust the Lord. Because when you bring that fear before the Lord, that's when God will resolve your problem. And that's the biggest disability that you might have if you fear in your heart. But the only person, only person that can resolve that is the Lord who is almighty and all loving and all knowing. When you have that true relationship with the Lord through the scripture, through the prayer life, that's when God will perform those miracles. That's when all your anxiety and worries are washed away. And then you look up, look up to the one who created the whole heavens. Who, where does all my help come from? It is the Lord who created all the heavens that watches you and helps you. He is the deliverer, the God who created all things. He is the one that resolved all the problem because He is Almighty. When you experience that, when you confess that before the Lord, when you pray that, that's when God will work in your life. You know, sometimes I actually pray that you have problems in life. You know, sometimes I pray that. The reason why I, I do, or I, the reason why I sometimes think that is because those are the hard time. When you face the hard time, you can truly know how much you trust the Lord. You can truly know the faith that you have in the Lord. Of course, like I said, you will face difficulties. In this 2019, yes, we pray, pray for blessings upon your life, but you will face struggles. You will face temptations. When, they, when, when you do, when you are fear, bring that fear and the problem before the Lord. When you have that relationship, true relationship with God, when you truly bring that faith before the Lord, God will raise you and bring you and truly use that to reflect on His glory. And I pray that for you. Let us pray. Loving God, we truly, truly thank you. You have delivered us. Even though when we were nothing, even though we were sinners, you have saved us. And yet you still raise us up and you still use us and to use it for your glory. I thank you so much. As it, we face 2019, we know we will face difficulties and problems and be tempted. But we will not fear. We will not struggle because we will trust you. We will not fear even if there is a uh, river that blocks our road. Even if there may be people who are attacking us Lord help us to be able to trust you and by trusting you will Lord instead of us fearing instead you will use those as an opportunity to um, make our faith stronger and to trust you and when we trust you you will be glorified Lord we pray for our children Lord that they will be able to look up to you who, where does my help come from? It is through the Almighty and all-knowing God. Help the, our children to be able to trust you fully. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.